This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show. Up on this episode we are concluding our month-long series on Amicus Productions. This was a listener choice and a poll, I think was how we did it. But essentially I said, what do you want me to cover in November because I don't have anything currently scheduled and you guys were like Amicus and that is a surprising blank spot for this show and it's 10 years runtime. we very rarely covered anything from that that studio so it's been mostly anthologies in fact it's been all anthologies up to this point but we're concluding the series proper with and now the screaming starts from 1973 a not anthology from amicus uh but surprisingly dark and goofy at the same time so very much in keeping with the amicus tone so we're going to get to that movie after the first break before we get to that there is tons of things happening the big thing is tomorrow on the channel you are getting a five-hour episode it's our annual director's conversation myself doug tilly bo ransdell sitting down discussing brian de palma this year we've split it in half so you're getting part one tomorrow Uh, The second part will be coming uh, first quarter of next year, but we're covering the years 1968 through 1980. We'll be concluding on a review of Dress to Kill. It is an incredible episode. I've already done the edit for it, and you guys are going to love it. It will take a little while to get through because it's about five hours of content, but I have faith in you. After that, the rest of December, right up to the 24th, an episode dropping every single day, and then we're taking a couple of weeks off for Christmas. So, for the first time of this episode, we're going to take a break. It's probably the last time as well, to be honest. Uh, We're going to take a break just now. You are going to see the trailer for And Now the Screaming Starts when I return. We're discussing that movie right after this. It all began with a curse. A curse from the grave. The evil you did this day will be avenged. A curse of the dead hand. (laughs) The dead hand that crawls, creeps, and kills. The dead hand that lives. And now the screaming starts. For them. And for you. And welcome back. So, that was the trailer for And Now the Screaming Starts. Let me give you some details on this movie. And Now the Screaming Starts was released in 1973. It was directed by Roy Ward Baker, uh, based on the work of David Case and Roger Marshall as the writers. The movie itself stars Peter Cushion, Herbert Lom, Patrick McGee, Stephanie Beecham, Ian Ogilvie, Geoffrey Whitehead, Guy Rolfe, Rosalie Crutchley, Gillian Lind, Sally Harrison, Janet Kay, John Sharp and some other people in here as well. The synopsis is listed on IMDb. England. 1795. The young Catherine has married Charles Feningriff and moves into his castle. She becomes the victim of an old curse that lays on the family. On her wedding night, she's raped by the ghost. So yeah, surprisingly dark. Um, Took a turn that I wasn't expecting, but that's Amicus, isn't it? Uh, I suppose the big thing for me was I had never seen this before, but recently we were at the all 
all day horror madness. It's usually all night that I go to, but it was the all day horror madness that's put on by good friend on Facebook. And the whole premise behind this is you go in, you watch a collection of four or five movies. He tries to source them from the original uh, prints. So you get the actual original like 16 mil prints and he plays them and he puts the kind of trailers of the time spliced throughout. Now they're usually put in there for a bit of comedic uplift and the trailer for this one is surprisingly goofy and it was one of those ones that as soon as the Amicus Productions came up and I was like, oh right, I'll need to keep that in the back of my head for some time that it might come up and then you guys selected Amicus I was like, well, there we go. If ever there was a time to bring this forward, let's do it. I knew very little about the movie at all. And having saw the trailer, I thought this was going to be more of a horror comedy until I actually started watching it and realised it is surprisingly darker, yet completely goofy in its tone throughout. The central premise is listed there is a well-to-do young lady um, is moving in with her soon-to-be husband. And they are settling down in the family mansion almost immediately as she arrives she starts getting weird um kind of visions of uh, a severed hand which kind of things across the floor and uh, this kind of eyeless ghoul that keeps appearing as a manifestation in the window um this kind of all is born out of this um family portrait and a, a curse that's been laid down upon the family. She slowly starts to lose her mind the further we go on throughout the movie. And actually, as mentioned in the synopsis, is ultimately raped by the the, the ghost, the eyeless, minus one hand ghost. Um, she falls pregnant and, and ultimately has a child, which we're going to come back to at the end. And then from there, it's her descent into madness uh, it's Peter Cushion arriving to do some investigation to try and see if he can work out exactly what it is that happened. It's flashbacks to exactly what did happen um, in the past with a relative who is cursed for essentially raping, <laughs> like uh, raping a woman and then chopping the hand off her lover and um, just being a, a general bad dude. That guy's played by Herbert Lom, who is more commonly known for being in the Pink Panther movies uh, with uh, Peter Sellers, but actually did a ton of genre stuff, um, including Mark of the Devil, which if you've seen that, he's a nasty piece of work in that. That's in or around the same time. I think Mark of the Devil's 72, this movie's 73. So he's obviously just going through his torturing and raping phase in genre movies. Um so it kind of it sets up that way. The ending, no one really comes out well in this one. The husband goes crazy um, and the wife ends up giving birth to a child that has the birthmark of the, the entity that raped her and is also born deficient of a hand with a, a, a little stump there. Um, I suppose indicating that the ghost has been reborn through the child I don't know, it's all very Ghostbusters too. Vigo, um, he is Vigo. Uh, Vigo obviously being involved with this. I don't know, to be honest, I, by the end of this movie, my brain kind of hurt. I don't think it's necessarily a bad movie. I think it's it suffers from a couple of issues. One, the premise of the crawling hand in, in today's age, maybe it worked better in 73, is a bit ludicrous. Um... And also, I kind of kind of felt like we really teased out the story here. This actually felt like it could have been a really decent anthology short in one of the Amicus anthologies. I think actually stretching it out to feature length actually doesn't help it. Peter Cushion doesn't come into this movie until like the last 20 minutes before he shows up. And when he does, he instantly steals the movie because he's incredible and he's Peter Cushion. But it does kind of make you wonder why that's the case. Uh, did he only have a limited amount of days that he could shoot on the movie? Or is this a case of he's too expensive? Or actually, we're going to tag him on because we realise we don't actually have any big names. We need a way to prolong this movie out. The same with Herbert Lom. We get a long way to this movie before we get the flashback. If you've got Herbert Lom there, let's have him in some of the, the visions or something that we could do. 
felt like a, a kind of missed opportunity. The movie has a surprisingly dark ending, and this is what makes me think it would actually be like like a short anthology segment better. Um, the ending is very, very, very gnarly. I mean, ultimately, you have a distraught and psychologically scarred husband, and you have a wife who's left to bring up um, a child of supernatural rape is the best way I can describe it and she looks broken as a as a character the child obviously is innocent but we don't know how that's going to grow up as time moves on so it just all very tonally all over the place it's shot beautifully though the effects are great the actual effects on the severed hand work really really well and I love the effects on the ghost the kind of eyeless ghost looks absolutely brilliant so so from that side of things I thought that was all handled really well. I suppose my, my overall feeling or my concern on it was that I actually felt that it was just too long. This kind of felt like a short story that had been stretched out and as a result some of that just kind of falls over in the mix. I don't really have much more to say about it to be honest. I watched it for the first time last night. Uh, there's a great copy up on YouTube so you can check it out there. Um, but it was one of those ones where I kind of felt like I always kind of rag on Amicus for being like a one trick pony through anthologies and they did plenty of movies out with that but now having sampled one of those ones I actually wish it was part of an anthology which is kind of the problem isn't it overall I am part of the problem and not being the solution to this issue overall I would say I liked it I, I would give it a 3 out of 5 I wouldn't go any higher than that at all Um but it's not a movie I would ever really rush back to check out, if I'm being honest. So yeah, 3 out of 5 for And Now The Screaming starts the final movie we're covering in this series on um, Amicus, the production company, uh, which currently has a, a group of UK filmmakers trying to resurrect. So we'll see how that gets on. I think the time for Amicus is long gone, but I dare say if the people will it and there's money there, anything can happen thanks very much for checking out this series if you're checking this out on youtube please hit a like and a subscribe on the video and let me know in the comments do you like this movie am i being overly harsh or critical or am i actually being too kind um i'd be interested to see what you guys made of it but yeah make sure you subscribe and hit a like if you're checking it out on spotify or anchor there's a question that always pops up at the end of these video podcasts please answer that question and make sure you're subscribed over there and if you're checking out the audio version on any of the podcatchers out there subscribe to the channel that way you get access to all the episodes as and when they drop you also get access to the entire back catalog of about 1300 episodes at this point of content please keep your eyes and ears peeled for tomorrow when we drop our director's conversation, our annual podcast this year, turning its attention at Sauron's Eye directly on the the auteur Brian De Palma over numerous movie reviews and in-depth conversations. So please check that one out. Um, all that's left for me to say is I hope you've enjoyed this Amica series. I dare say we will be doing another one of these at some point down the road. So wherever you are, wherever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off. <laughs>